Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're going to talk about net carbs versus total carbs. What's the difference? And which one is right for you? We'll find out right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews. We do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics. And then once a week, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about net carbs versus total carbs. Because in the keto community, this can be a really controversial subject. Yeah. There are some people who feel that you have to count every single carbohydrate you take in. And then there's other people who feel like you can not count the fiber and not count sugar alcohols. And I have met folks on both sides of this issue who are very passionate about their stance. Yeah. So today we're going to figure out which one is right and which one you should do. Oh my goodness. We're going to get tomatoes. <sighs> thrown at our faces. We'll be okay. So before we even talk about carbohydrates, we should probably talk about insulin because mm -hmm. there's a direct correlation between insulin and carbohydrates. And carbohydrates. So if you don't know, insulin is basically a fat storing hormone. Right. It's how your body regulates the glucose in your blood. Mm -hmm. So every time that you consume starches and sugars and to a lesser extent protein and fat, your body releases insulin so it can regulate that glucose. Yeah, and that's why it is so important that you know exactly how many meals you're going to eat in a day because every single time you eat something, you spike your insulin to some degree. Right, and just carbs will spike it higher than things like fat and protein. Right. Okay, now along with that, whenever your insulin is high, your body stores fat because it doesn't need the fat because it's converting all of that glucose mm -hmm. or the, all those sugars to glucose. Right. But when your insulin is low, your body burns fat. Yeah. And we want to be burning fat. Yes. That is the goal. So now that we've talked about insulin, let's talk about net carbs. And this is a very easy math equation, even for Rachel, who does not like to do math. Okay? So take your package or bottle, anything that you're purchasing at the grocery store, and flip it over and look at the nutritional label. You'll find that there is a total carbs in grams. From that number, subtract out your fiber and your sugar alcohols, and that will give you your net carbs per serving. Now, make sure that you're subtracting sugar alcohols and not sugars, because yeah. that's different. Now, the only time you can subtract sugars is when you look in the ingredients and it says allulose is the sweetener for the sugar, then you could deduct that, but you have to look on the label and find out how much allulose are they using, because sometimes you'll have a product where it says like, 10 grams of sugar in it, but it's nine grams of allulose, which means you can only subtract nine grams out of that carbohydrates. Now the math equation is getting a little dicey. Right. And you also have to know that you cannot subtract like stevia because stevia isn't a sugar alcohol. Yeah. Okay. So now that we know what net carbs are, let's talk about why is it that people feel like it's okay to do that? Well, it comes down to insulin. Absolutely. I mean, one of the reasons why you feel comfortable deducting the fiber out of something is because your, your body's not going to digest that. So right. um, it's going to have little or no effect on your blood glucose. Right. And then you look at the sugar alcohols, it's the same thing. Since there are sugar alcohols like erythritol, they don't spike your insulin or your blood glucose. Therefore, people feel like there's no reason to be counting that in our diet. And that's kind of why they come to that conclusion. Right. Now, along with that, there are even some fibers that will lower your blood glucose, things like chicory root fiber. So yeah. it's another reason why people feel like you, it's okay to not count those carbohydrates. Right. So now we've done net carbs. Let's talk about the total carb camp. So one of the reasons that people do total carbs over net carbs is because of sugar alcohols. Yeah. So not all sugar alcohols are created the same. Not even if they all end in the word tall. Not even if they end in tall. You know, you look at something like erythritol. Erythritol is zero on the glycemic index. It won't spike your blood sugar and it won't spike your insulin. But then you look at something else like xylitol and maltitol and sorbitol. All talls. All talls. All considered sugar alcohols, but they're not zero on the glycemic index. 
they'll all spike your insulin and they'll all spike your blood glucose, some higher than others, and some of them are even worse than regular sugar. Wow, that is really frightening. Right. Some people choose to do total carbs because they're super like sensitive to carbs. People yeah. that have like type 2 diabetes, like yes. this is a real issue. Yeah, they've already got an insulin issue and just a small amount of carbohydrates can affect them. Absolutely. Then you also have the fiber issue. Not all fibers are the same. You know, yes, there's fibers in vegetables and things like that, which you know your body isn't going to digest, even fibers in fruits and stuff. You know, your body is not going to digest that and you don't have to count that. But then you've got like some of the man-made fibers that your body will partially digest. Things like IMO fiber, which is something that we talk about all the time. Yeah, that's why we're so passionate about it when we do reviews and stuff because right. you've got companies that are manipulating the system. Yet another reason to practice total carbs because then you're not putting it in you know, the company's hands to, to maybe try to manipulate this math equation that we do to get net carbs. Right. Another reason people do total carbs is for something that a lot of people don't even know about this. It's called the cephalic insulin response right and what it is is when your body is so sensitive to carbs it especially happens in diabetics mm -hmm. that your body actually starts to spike insulin simply by smelling tasting and sometimes even seeing sweet food wow and they've done studies where people put something that's zero calorie that's like zero on the glycemic index and they put it in their mouth they swish it around and they spit it out they don't even swallow it and their bodies uh, start spiking the glucose and the insulin. That is amazing. And it's why it's so important for you to know your body. Yes. So we've talked about net carbs. Yes. We've talked about total carbs. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about some of the variations that people do. Because that's really where we are at. Right. You know, depending on what we are eating and depending on the day that we are eating it, sometimes we practice total carbs and sometimes we practice net carbs. Right. For example, like on Fridays, we follow a net carb protocol and mm -hmm. that's because that's our dessert day. Yeah. So we don't count the erythritol or the sugar alcohols that happen to be in that food. So that's a net carb day. Right. But the rest of the week, for the most part, we follow a total carb protocol with a couple of little variations. Yeah. Okay. So you have some people that use a variation where they do the carbs they take out the fiber, but they don't take out the sugar alcohol. Because maybe they're very sensitive right. to sugar alcohols. And then you have other people who do the carbs and they only take out half of the fiber. Right. And they're just kind of working a like security net in there in case any of the fiber carbs are wonky. Right. And you also have the fact that like, you know, Robert Savage, Robert Sykes talked about and some other people have talked about that nutrition companies or food companies have a 20% leeway where they can alter that or not have everything right. 20% when you are trying to like keep your macros exact can make a huge impact. Right, so if you're trying to hit 20 total carbohydrates or 20 net carbohydrates and you pick up something and it says it has 10 carbs, well, it could have 12 carbs. You know, so that could it make a big up. difference for you, especially mm -hmm. if you do more than one serving of it. Exactly. Okay. Then you have the the camp that we kind of fall into. And this is what we recommend to people, especially in wake of like all of the different products that are coming out that are keto friendly. Right. And this isn't so much from like, you know, the small keto companies that are coming from within the community, but you get a lot of products that are coming from like corporate America, from like, you know, um, Hellman's mayonnaise or Heinz ketchup or yeah. all of these different products that are coming out where they're trying to hone in on us and take advantage of us. They're and calling they may be, themselves keto friendly. They're calling themselves sugar free. Right. And they may be adding products like sorbitol or something like that. Mm -hmm. So what we suggest is doing net carbs for anything that is like a whole food. Things like your eggs, yes. things like your vegetables, stuff like that. Pretty much stuff that like wasn't made by man. Because if God put the carbs in it, you can trust those fibers, right? right? Yeah, so if you're looking at something like asparagus or arugula or, you know, kale or spinach or any of that kind of stuff, your Brussels sprouts and stuff like that, you know, our belief is you can take that fiber out. Your body is not going to digest that fiber, and it's actually a good fiber for you. Yeah. You know, I don't believe that eliminating all fiber is good for you because your body needs the fiber. It helps regulate your system. Exactly. Okay. So then what we do is that is we do the net carbs for the whole foods, but then total carbs for all the processed foods. We feel like that kind of takes out the human elements. Right. Right, where if someone's doing something without integrity, I'm not like... You don't have to worry about it. I'm not it. injured by them. And if we just make a mistake and it's an honest mistake, we're not injured by that either. Right. So now if I take something like this Nui cookie, if I'm following the protocol that we try to follow for the most part. And this is a process. And food. this is what we, that is, this is pretty much the way we are on Fridays. Yeah. Okay. So on Fridays, we say we're net carb, but we still usually won't count our veggies. We use all of our carbs 
for whatever our dessert was. Exactly. Okay, so if you look at these Nui cookies, it's 240 calories for two cookies. It's 20 total carbohydrates, 3 grams of fiber, and 13 grams of erythritol. So if I'm going by 20 total carbohydrates, that's it. I can't have any vegetable at all. Exactly. But if I'm going by my net carbohydrates, I've only eaten four net carbs between the two cookies. Big difference. So what we'll do is we'll do that only one day a week and then still eat like all of our vegetables to bring us up to 20 carbs. Exactly. Okay. But definitely something you want to consider because that's a huge difference. Right. If you're eating this every single night, it can have a major impact. Right. Now what this all comes down to, which one is right? If you want to follow more of a net carb protocol, which again, there is nothing wrong with that. And it works for some people, especially at the beginning. Exactly. Okay. But if you're going to follow a net carb protocol, it's very important to start to learn, number one, how to read a nutrition label. Absolutely. How to like know like you can't take out sugar, but you can take out sugar alcohol. Mm -hmm. And you need to really start like increasing your knowledge on the different ingredients. Yes. So that when you read a label, you know what you're taking into your body. Right. So if you pick up something like, for example, this Nui cookie, it's not just about looking at this that the nutrition label, but it's then about going down to the ingredients. So they say this has 13 grams of sugar alcohols. We'll now go down and see what is the sugar alcohol that they're using. Right. If they're saying that sugar alcohol is sorbitol, don't buy it. Because it doesn't matter if they say it's a sugar alcohol or not. It's going to affect you in a totally right. different way. So if you know, that, for example, and it's the second ingredient here, the sugar alcohol they're using is erythritol, you're good. Yeah. Okay, that's that's one that's not going to spike your insulin and not going to spike your blood sugar. But that's where people like get themselves into trouble, like a product that's using IMO fiber. Well, you can only really subtract half of that. So if you start, you know, increasing your knowledge on what the different ingredients are, which ingredients are okay to take out mm -hmm. and which ingredients like you need to avoid and not take out. That will help you if you're following more of a net carb protocol. And it's going to head you in the direction of your weight loss and health goals. Yeah. And it won't stumble you. Right. And then you're more likely to stick with this. Yeah. Right? So I guess you want the answer to the big question. Should you do total carbs or should you do net carbs? And our totally controversial answer is you need to do what works for you. Yeah. The bottom line is it comes down to you need to learn your body. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're doing something like 20 net carbs and you're not seeing any results or you've hit a stall, try switching over to total carbs. Try doing one of the variations. Try lowering your carbs a little bit. That 20 is not a magic number. There's nothing in your body that goes at 20, you're good. And at 21, oh. you're out of ketosis. Right. Some people can do 30. Some people can do 40. Some people can't handle more than 10. Yep. It comes down to knowing your body and knowing which one works best for you. Exactly. But the most important thing is to figure out which one you want to do, start educating yourself on all of the different products, and then just continue to stick with it. And what we're going to stick with being passionate about is defending you no matter what you choose to do, right. what is best for your body. So if somebody's trying to bully you either way, right. send them our way. <sighs> Because we love you and we're excited that you are even in this keto lifestyle and what works best for you works best for us. That's right. I mean, we did most of our journey following a net carb protocol and it worked just fine. Yeah. And we've switched over to total carbs just to try to tweak things and see how we feel. Now we've kind of gone back to following like more of a variation, like not counting all of the carbs in our erythritol and only doing it once a week with those products. And then the rest of the week, we pretty much keep it super low eating like carnivore with some veggies thrown in. Because the point is, this isn't a sprint or a marathon. It's an entire lifetime. That's right. So we're going to tweak these things back and forth. Right. So that is our video for today. Let us know down in the comment section, which protocol do you follow? Do you follow net carbs? Do you follow total carbs? Or do you do a variation? And if you do do a variation, which one do you do? Exactly. So if you like what you saw today, do us a favor, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.